Hello everybody, this is part two of my journey through cancer and in this part I'm going to talk about chemotherapy. Um, so I've tried doing this video several times and each time I just break down. So uh, I hope I'm going to be able to get this video done and do it without breaking down. So before I started my chemo, I had to meet with the oncologist and go over what my treatment plan will be like. And while doing all of that, he told he gave me a requisition form for various tests. They had to scan my bones. They had to scan my soft tissues. Those are like two different tests with two different machines, like CT, CT scans. Um, I had to do tests before, like blood work, before each chemo session so that they will know if my blood levels were okay and some other things. My requisition form was six pages long. Uh, I also had to, because the cancer was in the breast, I had to go and insert uh, something that was, as I've forgotten the name now, but it was as small as a rice, um, a rice grain. It was called a marker. So the 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 reason for that is for them because the oncologist told me that in the event that chemo dissolves the tumor completely, they will be able to know exactly where the tumor was. So I had to go get that done. And that process on its own was another excruciating process because when I went in, they had to put a freezing agent right there to numb my breasts before um, the doctor that was going to do the procedure told me what to expect um, for like throughout the procedure. Like, it did not take so much time. They would just inject it. And then after that, I had to go and do an ultrasound scan and another mammogram, which was excruciatingly painful. Luckily, I had an elder friend with me, Madame Franca. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ma. Thank you to you and your husband, your family, because they were very helpful to me. She would follow me for all my appointments because my husband was not in the country at the time. She would follow me for all my appointments. She would help me to stand in queues until it was my turn. Then I would go and um, replace her on the, on the queue to be attended to, she would come to my house, she would cook. She kept telling me, don't worry about anything, whatever it is, I will be there. Luckily, I'm not working at the moment, so whatever appointments you need me to go for, if it's to help you pick the kids from school, whatever, and really, true to her words, she was there. So thank you so much, Ma. So she, um, she was with me. We drove home, picked up my kids. So the next, the day, the next day, was um going to be like one just one day before my chemo and i was really worried but i handed everything over to god said playing music went into the bathroom to just like do a body scrub just basically do things that would make me to feel like i was taking care of myself self-care and all of that and then i slept off the next morning we went for chemotherapy now with chemo, they would have to look for your veins, you know, because there are two types of chemo. There's the oral chemo, the one that you take by mouth, and then there's also the one where they, uh, like, infuse it. They are drips. So before I go for chemo, I was giving medications to prevent some side effects of the chemo chemotherapy. It was not going to stop it, but it was going to at least reduce it a bit. So, and this medication, there were about three of them that I had to take in my house before I left for the hospital, at least an hour before chemotherapy. Then getting to the hospital, the nurses made me comfortable, gave me a warm blanket, asked me if I wanted to drink juice, crackers, showed me to where I was going to sit for my chemo, helped me to raise my feet up like with a chair and all of that. And then the chemo chemotherapy started. Started with um, carboplatin. Carboplatin was the pre-med. It was another uh, medication to prevent 
um, side effects or to reduce them. I think I'll even use the word reduce in this in this instance because you really cannot prevent the side effects when you're going through chemotherapy, but at least you, it can be reduced. After that infusion and the chemotherapy started, and the first one was my paclitaxel. That was the name of the chemotherapy. And that one, I was told by my oncologist to ask for ice so that I could insert both my hands and my feet in it, even though it's going to cause nerve damage. And that particular medication used to run for about 45 minutes to one hour. So my hands would be in ice. And I was doing this chemotherapy in February. That was like the core of winter. My hands would be in ice for the duration of the um, of that particular infusion. So my hands and my feet would be in ice. So short, shortly after they started the infusion, I, my my stomach began to hurt me. I was no longer comfortable. I was in pain. I had to tell Madam Franca, and then she um, quickly hurried to go call the nurses and they came and stopped the infusion and gave me um, some medication that will help to calm me down. Then they slowly started it and reduced the speed. After that, I was okay. I was just dizzy. Afterwards, I even managed to drive myself home with my eyes being dizzy and all of that. Um, when I got home, I was waiting for my sister and my friend, Laifa. Laifa, thank you. Herself and her family, too, were immensely helpful. As this video goes on, any video I do, when I get to the point where um, somebody came through for me, I would always mention their name. Herself and her family really came through for me. So she came to my house. I've known her since. I've known Laifa for about 26 years now. We're friends in secondary school. Um, so she came to my house from work to come and make sure that I was okay, cooled, cleaned up, make sure, made sure that my kids were okay, um, stayed all through the weekend with me, and then she had to leave on Sunday. Um, so in the course of the chemo, like some side effects I noticed are nausea, constipation. The first week of chemo was constipation for me. No, no, no. The first week of chemo was diarrhea. Then subsequent weeks were constipation. My chemotherapy was every Friday. Um, I was not just... I think I vomited just a few times because I was very, very... You know, as much as I really hate medication, but in this, in, like, during this time period, I was very constant with taking my medication. So and most of my medication, they also had the sleep aspect to it because once I take it, I'll be, I'll be very drowsy. I will sleep off, you know. Sometimes I will not even take my medication if my kids were in school to make sure that I'm awake to, at least, at least let them in, give them their food, and then I'll take the medication and just like pass out. My husband was not here at the time, like I said earlier in the video. So it was me and the kids, and people were coming to check on us. My next chemo was one of my high school friends to Jubril. Jubril, thank you. You did not have to do it, but you came through. And funny enough, I had not seen him since we left secondary school. But when he heard I was in Canada, he came to my former house. And then when this whole thing started, and he heard, he said, oh, he was even in the U.S. at the time. He said he was, uh, he was going to come in the night before my chemo. And then he would come and take me for my chemo. And true to his words, he showed up in the morning and took me for my chemo, made sure I was settled in, and then left for um, work and came back to come and pick me up to take me home and made, made sure that I had gotten into bed before he left. So people basically just showed up for me. Side effects were nausea, loss of my hair, loss of my nails. These My nails were bleeding. They were bringing out pores. This particular thumb went off completely. Lack of appetite. I had for, I would have to force myself to eat. Um, it affected my taste buds. The doctor told me about that to, to stay away from every, anything that is my favorite food or my favorite um, drink. Because when my taste buds are like... Uh, when my taste buds change because of chemo, I would not 
really, really like those foods and he does not want it to ruin the experience of those foods for me. So if I could stay off, I should stay off, you know. So a lot of things just changed. I had spots, my face, I had lines here, dark spots here. Inside my lips, you could see uh, like polka dots, my tongue, my vision would get blurry. I became very forgetful. I would want to do something I will not remember because of that. I had to start carrying a small notepad and a um, pen to be writing down, down anything that comes to mind. I could not concentrate on anything. I was always weak. My heart would be racing. Um, it was a lot. It was a lot. I'm talking about the loss of my hair. I think that was one of my biggest fears because I had really long hair for an African or for a Nigerian. I had really long hair, you know, um, that if you stretch it out, would reach my bra length, like where my bra is. But all of a sudden, my hair, and my hair was not just long, it was also very full. I remember I was going to saloon in Nigeria and they would be asking me, um, ah, Madam, why are you making your, if I had this your kind of hair, I would not make it all, that kind of thing. So to see my hair coming off, and I just put my hand, and the first week it did not come off, but from the second chemo, I started losing my hair from the second chemo, but it did not become as bad as from the third chemo. Once I just touched my hair, as I'm taking off my hand, my hair was coming off. After the third chemo, my husband came, so he just helped me to just shave it off. I was crying. My kids were crying. It was just very emotional. It was just a lot. I would feel like I was going to pass out. But what kept me strong, number one, was God. And number two, I kept fighting because of my kids. And while I was searching for um, healing scriptures, one the one that stood out to me was Psalm 41 verse 3. The ESV version, which says that God will heal you. Like, it basically says that God is going to heal me. Like, he's going to give me total healing. That God would look after me on my sick bed and would give me total healing. Now I'm paraphrasing, but if you read it, so I start personalizing it to myself. For every time that I'm feeling down, I will tell myself, I will, I will say, God, this is your word. I'm not going to die. Cancer will not end me. Cancer will not break me. My husband will be looking at me. Everybody that comes to see me will be looking at me. And they will keep saying, oh, we came here to come and support you, but we are even drawing strength from you. Because for some reason, you like whenever we, you, we come, you like even motivate us. You don't allow whatever it is that you're going through to weigh you down. I would say, yeah, so I have to fight. I have to fight for my kids. I have to be alive for my kids. I have to be there to look after them. I will keep declaring that word. I will say, God, this is what you promised me. You did not say I will not fall sick. You said, but you on my sick bed, you'll be there for me. And then you restore me back to my full health. Some version says total health. Some version says full health. So that's what I kept telling God. That was the verse that resonated with me. I know that there are verses like by your stripes I'm healed and all those other things. No, for me, it was that Psalm 41 verse 3 which said, God will be with me and God will restore me back to my full health. So I kept talking. I kept um, like, like if I'm having my bath, I'll be saying it. If I'm if I lie down on my bed, I'll be saying that. And that thing that kept me kept me going was Nathaniel Bass's song Adonai. It just I fell in love with that song the first time I heard it. And during cancer, it was like the song used to trans transport me to the throne of mercy. I used to tell my 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 husband that as far as I'm concerned, that this song came true. Like that came true to Nathaniel Bassi from the angels themselves. That's when I, because I just put in my airports uh, when I'm doing my chemotherapy, when I'm home, when I feel very depressed, and I've just kept that song <coughs> on constant repeat. I'm always repeating that song. So even now, when I hear, hear this song, it basically transports me to my chemotherapy chair. That's how bad it was. That song was my song on repeat. As I'm going to the hospital, that song I'm playing in the car. As I'm in my cable, I was just playing that song. I was just worshipping God because I'm like, God, you did not bring me this far. You did not give me children to make me to leave my children at a very young age. God, please come true for me. You, you uh, listen, I might not be the most righteous person, but I try to be as good as I can. I, can't, I try to be very kind. I try to think about what's what another person will feel before I take out um, 
set certain actions. So I said, please God, remember my mother. Remember my mother's service. Remember my own service to you. Standing under the rain, because back home in church, I was in the welcoming team. Standing under the rain to welcome people, to put a smile on people's faces, making people to feel at home and welcome to church. Um, this thing, taking down people's details and basically welcoming them into your house. I will tell God, please remember all my service and please spare my life. For the sake of my children, spare my life. And so, those are just a little bit of the side effects because there are, there are a lot. There are a lot and until now, I'm also still going through um, side effects from this um, ailment. You know, so I did my chemotherapy for six months, and after six months, was um, uh, they told me to give it some time, and then so my blood levels could come up, and that's another side effect because chemotherapy destroys your immune system. So anything that is passing by, you catch it. My kids, at the time, they could not come and hug me. I was wearing masks in the house. They were Everybody in my house was wearing masks. If you, are, you come to come and see me, you're wearing a mask. If you're not going to wear a mask, you, you don't come. So it was just bad. It was just awkward because they would be scared. They could not come and see me. So during chemotherapy, another thing was it would be hurting my veins. My veins, my, my body has cleared, you know, because <laughs> it was a lot. The chemotherapy will be in my veins. It will come out. That place will now become black. They will poke me here. They will poke me here. They will poke me and my veins. If you look at my hands, you cannot even see my veins through my hands. They will use a vein finder. They will still get it wrong. So at the point, my elder sister, Dr. Tina, not told, she's a medical doctor, she told me that I should just inquire about getting a port inserted so that that way, it's like they don't need to poke me in too many places. They just go directly to the ports and um, they go directly to the ports and they get it and the infusion will be in. So I inquired about the ports. Um, the doctor now scheduled me for the surgery. It was a mini surgery. So they connected it through. If you see, there's a scar here. They connected it through the, the vein. In my neck and then it's somewhere around here just right here um let's see so it's somewhere around here the port if you see there's a little bulge here so anywhere that i go for chemotherapy that is where they'll come they'll sometimes they'll tell me to lay back then they would clean it and then they will now press palpate they'll press press and then they will just go if i even go for chemotherapy, I have to put a numbing cream here, but it, does, it did not really use to work. So after some time I stopped because I still used to feel the pain. They would insert the needle there and then they would flush it and do everything that they have to do. And that's where I, I started taking my chemotherapy from. My veins could not take the chemotherapy, but once I did the port, it was okay. I remember the day I went for the port surgery my when i came back oh god the looks on my children's faces god i just my heart was just breaking because it was like they were really had broken they were crying you know to see me in that much pain but i i don't regret getting the pot because like i said they did not have to keep pricking me in several places just to um just to get the, the vein for my infusions to go through. Um, what other thing? Then my skin became very sensitive. My skin became extremely sensitive to everything. And then apart from the sensitivity of my skin, I became very scared. I was like, what am I putting on my skin? How am I sure that this is a natural and all of that? So what I did was to formulate my own product that I was using at the time for chemo with ingredients that will suit my skin and stop all those itchy, itchy, um, this and feeling all the itchiness on my skin. Because it because the day I made up my mind, yes, I had the skills and I had the know-how, but I was just, you know, I was not feeling well. I was just tired, everything. I was tired, I was angry at the world. I was angry about so many things. I was like, whatever, what is it so, you know? But then I will not remind myself, I will not allow myself to wallow in that, um, anger 
I will now start playing all the songs that will keep me calm. One of one one day, I the day that made me to say, okay, enough is enough. It's now time for you to order the ingredients to to formulate your lotion, your um your black soap, my lotion, my face oil, and all of that. It was when I sat down on the carpet. And I was just feeling tired. I wanted to lie down, but I was tired of lying down on the bed because I was always on the bed. I just didn't have energy. So I got up and came here. I lay down on my chair in the um, bonus room here. I, I was not comfortable. I said, let me lie down on the floor. As soon as I sat down on the floor, it was like all hell had gone loose. I'd let loose. I started itching. I could not stop itching. I called my husband, come on, come on. It was like I was going to peel off my body. I was itching my, my, um, my, my thighs, my legs, my hands. I was itching. So... It was like, what is the matter? What is the like? What what is the matter? I was like, I don't know. I ran into the bathroom, went to go have my bath. It was as if that one even escalated it. I, I could not stop itching. After some hours, that stopped. So, I, so when I spoke to the doctor, he said my skin might just be dry. He gave me some allergy med medication. And all those things. So I just told myself, enough is enough with all this itchy. For I will go and spoil my beautiful skin that I have. And I just went online and just ordered my my um my ingredients for my body butter, and then also started researching for um and also I also now started researching for the facial oil that I wanted to use because I had. Marks, so like even does even like a whisker, black marks here from chemotherapy. Everything, my nails were black. A whole lot was just going on. So after doing all the research, I um, ordered my ingredients, formulated my products, and then I now started getting my skin back. I was darker, even than my senior friend, Madame Franca. She one day she saw me, said, "Oh my darling, you look so burnt. You look so burnt. Your skin is not like it used to be. Don't worry, everything will be fine. Everything will be fine." You know, I told her, "I look burnt, but I'm alive. Is it not okay?" So that's when my skin now like started feeling more moisturized, started feeling more nourished. Um. And the, my glow started coming back. And I felt at ease because I knew what I put in my product. It was me. I used my hand to make the product. I think I even have some... I have it, I have it somewhere. I have it somewhere. So this is one of it. And my kids too. I started um, making it for them. And it's not... It's lightly scented with essential oils. And um, this... Then this is the facial, my facial oil that I made for myself and I started using on my skin too, to make sure that my skin stayed hydrated and my, and my complexion came back. What else happened to me during chemo? Um, I have mentioned forgetfulness. My eyes will also be very watery. I'll just stare. My eyes will be like tears are falling out of my eyes. I'm not crying. Uh, it's not like I'm crying or anything. But it's just, there's just a lot really. I cannot really remember, like it's, remember everything. But it was a lot. And the eyes, I was, wor I was worried about my eyes. Because if you've been following me since 2019, you'll notice that in, sometime in 2020. Or in 2019, I don't remember the year now. I went to go and have um laser surgery i used to wear glasses and so i was so when my eyes would be all teary and going going blurry and all of that i was worried that oh i was i, I was worried that um chemo was not going to was not was not basically ruining my surgery that i had done to be seen without glasses you know but i just told myself whatever it is everything will come back I would, like God will restore me back to total health. And I think that that's, I think standing on that scripture, God really honored his word, which is why he sent me the best doctors. He sent me the best people around me. I had support. Church, where, where they were there for me. I had support. I had help. God just basically positioned people in my life that came through to come and help me. 
came through for me, were there for me, cared for me, would come to my house at different times just to make sure, are, are you okay? We'll trek in the snow to come and make sure, are you okay? We'll drive in the snow. Their car might even spoil on my road. You know, because the snow was snowstorm, but they still came through for me. So I'm, I'm forever grateful. My parents were worried. My dad would call, what do you need? What do you need? So what do you need? Do you need money? What is it? Oh, yes, dad, I need money. Send me money. You know, people were just basically there for me, you know, and my family. My dad came through. My mom came through. My siblings came through. My sister was on my case. Are you taking your medication? Buy the supplement. Buy the supplement. Do the supplement. After, after this time, I think I'll sit down and list out a list of supplements that I took that helped me. Um, and they basically find a way to like put it on the link where you, you can go and download it. Basically, things that helped me, I would find the time to like sit through it and um, like think through it, remember and gather everything, and then put it on the link where if you're going through certain things, you can download it and um, I and I hope it helps you. Um, what else happened to me during Kim? I think that's all I can think of for now. So, uh, my next video will be about um, uh, my surgery. My next video will be about surgery. Please know that whatever I put out, it, this is are my experiences. And I'm not a doctor. I'm not a licensed medical practitioner. I'm just someone that has gone through cancer. And I'm sharing my story in hopes that it will give other people that are going through it the strength. And it will also give them hope. And it will not just give you hope. It will give you strength. And you know that you'll be able to pull through whatever it is that you're going through. I'm not a licensed medical professional. I'm just sharing my story. Whatever supplements, whatever medication I mention, please consult your doctor before beginning. Um, another thing that chemo comes with is um, infertility. So before you start chemo, you'll be asked if you're still having children. If you're having children, they'll tell you to go uh, speak with uh, a professional so you, so that you can get your eggs freeze, um, frozen. If not, the chances of you running into menopause is very high. With me, yes, chemo put me into menopause. I'll be having hot flashes. I'll tell my mom, my mom will say, what do you mean? How old are you? i say, well, that's what it is. I'll be feeling very, a wave of heat, like, will just come over me like this. I'll be feeling hot. I'll be very sweaty. The next moment, I'm very cold. There was one time that I was even so cold that, so I'd, it was one of my good days. I'd finished cooking, because when is my good day, I try to cook and put in the fridge so I can ease my husband's stress. And then the next thing, I just sat down. As I sat down, I began to shake. I was trembling. I was shaking. My kids had to help me to go up. As I went up, they covered me in how many blankets. At a point, all my kids came and lay down on me to give me body heat so that I could stop shaking. That was how bad it was. And when you're doing chemo, you're also told that if you are having, if you have fever, a fever, you're not allowed to take any Tylenol or any acetamophen or anything, Panadol, all of those things. Because when you take it, it will, also, it will mask your symptoms. And it might just be that your body is shutting down. It might be that your body, something is going very wrong. So they, they said, call 911 and start heading to the emergency if you can. If you, don't have, like, if you have someone to take you, start heading to the emergency. And once you get there, tell them that you have a fever and that you're going through chemotherapy. Was it my bleeding gums? <laughs> was it my bleeding my bleeding gums or my bleeding tongue uh, I could not like I could not even eat anything I'll be in so much pain do I look like it anytime you watch my video just thank God thank God I could not eat I could only drink I went through what 
what the Bible says that even if I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I went through the valley of the shadow of death. But God brought me out and God showed me and my family mercy. And that was another prayer I kept praying. Mercy, mercy, mercy. God really came through and showed me mercy. Gene Kimo, I thank you for your mercy. Girl, I'm amazed by how you've shown me mercy. Daddy Mo, I thank you for your mercy. That was another song that was on repeat, but that was after I was told I was cancer free because I could resonate with that song so much. So I think that's all I have for this video. Next one will be about surgery. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. I've been responding to DMs. I've been responding to comments. Um, I think your questions will help me to know what answers you need and I can do videos to respond to them and then also please try to subscribe to my youtube channel because i will try to be dropping these videos at least once a week i've not picked a particular day yet but at least once a week because of my busy schedule um being a mother and an employee um a wife you know it's a lot on me and my husband is not here at the moment so um it's basically me that is mother and father to my kids doing all the running around so um once a week at least please try 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 please subscribe support my channel follow me on instagram follow me on tiktok um and it shall be well with you thank you so much and god bless you for watching bye